Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for a better knowledge of your family tree next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Eric Killmonger, the Black Panther's cousin with abilities comparable to the Black Panther. So am I just remaking the Black Panther video? No, there's a simple difference between these two cats. One of them's really mad. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a suit that's skin tight and virtually indestructible, and maybe even sends our opponent's attacks back at them. Next, we need to be a trained murderer with expertise in infiltration and destabilization of major governments. Finally, we need the grace of a cat, with enough speed and flexibility that I think you're technically a liquid. For stats, we're using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that you're strong and fast. Put your strength and constitution at 14. You need to be ripped enough to break retainers, which is a joke about killing King's assistants, but also that girl who thirsted so hard that she broke her retainer when Michael B was on screen? Goals. Dexterity at 13, you're great with guns, and you're really hard to hit. That's the speed stat, folks. Wisdom at 12, cats have superior senses, and you need to see an invisible city. Intelligence and charisma can go to 10. You're not bad at those things, we just need other stuff more. If you want, you could move the 12 to any of those stats. I just think perception is going to be the most important. We can cheese up our stats a little more with custom lineage, which is just variant human with plus 2 in 1 stat instead of plus 1 in 2 stats. And you can get dark vision, though I'll always just take another skill. Grab skill expert for your feet. To bump up your dexterity by one, you can grab a skill like acrobatics, then get expertise in that skill right away, doubling your proficiency bonus with it. Acrobatics is great to get out of grapples. The only member of your family you'd want hugging you is dead, so use this to make family gatherings a little less awkward. Bump your strength with your two free points, take history for your skill of choice, and the soldier background for athletics and intimidation skills. You don't have to notch yourself for every kill. That's a little icky, but it does help the intimidation. We'll kick things off as a rogue since they get the most skills at level 1 to help them get the most kills at level 1. Insight, Investigation, Perception, and Stealth are all solid options to get into the seat of power and throw wrenches left and right. We'll get expertise in Investigation and Perception right away to make up for your intelligence and wisdom being lower than I'd like. Intimidation would also be a solid option. Heck, Athletics wouldn't be bad either. You've got options on top of options. Speaking of options, Sneak Attack gives you an option to kill people, letting you add a d6 of damage to an attack if you have advantage on the roll or an ally within 5 feet of the target. It doesn't matter if you're fighting fair, it only matters if you win, even though you actually kind of fight pretty fair, all things considered. You have to be using a finesse or a ranged weapon for this. I'd call your claws a reflavored dagger, but you're also pretty much ready to use any weapon you have to in order to finish the job. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. The dashing is probably the most in-character move for some panther speed, though there's really nothing that could hit you. You're decked out in vibranium, so disengaging could be nice too. Third level rogues get to choose a roguish archetype, and if you're gonna bust into the most heavily guarded city in the world, assassin is the only way to do it. This lets you assassinate to get advantage on creatures who haven't acted in initiative yet, and you automatically critically hit surprised foes. Your sneak attack is 2d6 now, so that's kicking things off with 4d6, a pretty solid strategic advantage. Assassins also get poisoners and disguise kit proficiency, which should help you get to go where you need to go, in style too. Steady aim lets you give yourself advantage on attack rolls as a bonus action, as long as you don't move that round. If you're doing the standard D&D fight of we both stand still and hit each other until one of us dies, this is pretty useful. I just Hope to God your DM is creating more interesting encounters. Four level rogues get an ability score improvement will actually invest in strength. Even though sneak attack requires a finesse weapon, you're not required to use dexterity with the finesse, meaning that if we're going to multi-class into barbarian and wanted to get a damage boost from rage that only works with strength-based weapons, this would be a way to pair those classes together nicely. Oh, by the way, we're going to multi-class over to barbarian, giving us rage, which will let us add extra damage to your strength-based weapon attacks. Even though rage uses a strength-based weapon, you're not required to use a weapon without finesse, meaning that if you were going to multi-class with Rogue and wanted to get the damage boost from sneak attack that only works with finesse weapons, this would be a great way to pair the classes together nicely. You also resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for some vibranium defenses. You get advantage on strength checks and saves thanks to the extra power of the purple flower. These bonuses last for a minute and go away early if you don't attack someone or take damage, but uh, yeah, you're gonna attack people. Unarmored defense makes your AC 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier when you're not wearing armor, though I'm calling it vibranium defense since the suit is so tight it's effectively a second skin. In a lot of ways, Barbarian's gonna end up making a more accurate panther than Monk. I just couldn't really call T'Challa a ragey boy. Even when he's going on a vengeance quest, he doesn't get all that angry. Eric's nickname is Killmonger. 
so this works a little better for him. Second level Barbarians get the real Robarian synergy thanks to Reckless Attack, letting you make your attacks with advantage as long as you give your enemies advantage to hit you. Now you can guarantee sneak attack every round and move. Heck, you can even dash to keep up with your rival. You also get Danger Sense, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws as long as you can see the source of damage. Remember, since we started off as a rogue, your saving throws are dexterity and intelligence, so that should make fireballs less stressful for you. Third level Barbarians can choose a primal path and you took the mantle of generations by force that's a pretty cool backstory for ancestral guardian ancestral protectors basically challenge someone you're fighting to 1v1 you the first creature you hit per round while raging has disadvantage on attacks against targets that aren't you and even if they land the attack the target gets to resist the damage this would be great if there was some sort of villain league in marvel and if you didn't die in one movie i love that movie but dang what a waste of potential killmonger's great you also get another skill from the barbarian list at this level survival will help you trap people down. I could grab animal handling, but you fight cats. You don't befriend them. Fourth level barbarians get another ability score improvement so you can camp off your strength modifier for maximum damage, even if investing in other stuff would be safer. You've got a single goal and it isn't a long life in the countryside. Fifth level barbarians get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action, and you can attack a surprise creature twice for two free crits from assassin. Keep in mind, sneak attack only pops once per round, but rage is every single attack. Even if you're dual wielding, so double up short swords, it's a pretty stellar strategy. You also get fast movement here, giving you 10 feet of extra movement speed as long as you're not wearing heavy armor. Just drop any armor you're wearing in the water. You're here for a bad time, not a long time. Sixth level Ancestral Guardian Barbarians get Spirit Shield, letting you reduce incoming damage to a target you can see within 30 feet of you by 2d6 while you're raging. You can be that creature because you can see yourself, so now the Vibranium doesn't just work on physical attacks, but any kind of damage. That's how Vibranium works, except for Psychic, I guess. Bear Totem Barbarian would be good for that, but not for the other Panther stuff. Seventh level Barbarians get Feral Instincts, giving you advantage on initiative rolls and instinctive pounce to move half your movement speed as you activate your rage. If you've been waiting pretty much your whole life for a fight, it makes sense that you'd want to be first up in the initiative order. This pairs really well with Assassinate, since you'll get free advantage without having to get reckless, which means a free extra 2d6 damage on your first attack, or 4d6 if they're surprised. 8th level Barbarians get another ability score improvement. Power building, Constitution is the better move since it raises your health and AC at the same time. Dexterity is going to be our move, though you need better ranged attacks. Ranged attacks keep your rage going, just like melee attacks, they just don't get a damage boost. Ninth level Barbarians get brutal critical adding an extra damage die to your critical hits which you get for free on surprise targets if you're doing some two weapon fighting that's three attacks per round that get doubled also the assassinate doesn't just have to be from a sneak attack approved weapon so if you want to use something heavier you can do that eric just uses anything he wants so should you. 10th level Ancestral Barbarians get Consult the Spirits, letting you cast Augury or Clairvoyance once per short rest. Augury lets you know how something's gonna go in the next half hour. If it will go well, your ancestors say wheel. If it will go poorly, they say woe. The answer can also be both or neither. Clairvoyance lets you do some surveillance, setting up an invisible sensor that you can see through. Personally, I think the most in-character use of this is telling your ancestors you dethroned their favorite boy and are about to use the country's resources to destroy every other world government. There's no mechanical benefit Benefit to that though, it's just pretty brutal. Your vibranium can also block 3d6 damage per round now, by the way. 11th level barbarians get relentless rage, so the first time you should hit 0 HP while raging, you hit 1 HP instead if you can make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. This is a weakness of starting with rogue, since you don't have proficiency with constitution saving throws. The difficulty goes up by 5 each time. You could swap the skill expert feat for resilient at the beginning if you want to be better at this, but I'm going to reiterate, you're not trying to be a tank you're trying to be a bomb. 12 level barbarians get another ability score improvement, keep bumping that dexterity so we can shoot as well as we scratch. 13th level barbarians get another brutal critical die for some truly massive damage when you get lucky, and reckless attack helps you get lucky more often. At that point, I'd just call it skill. 14th level Ancestral Barbarians get Vengeful Ancestors, so when you defend yourself with Spirit Shield, your enemies now take an amount of force damage equal to the amount you reduced. You also reduce 4d6 damage for a full-on Vibranium Rebound. This is such a good one-for-one one of the Black Panther suit, I'm starting to wonder if I made a mistake on the original build. Just kidding, I'm perfect. 15th level Barbarians get Persistent Rage, meaning your rage only ends early if you wanted to, although I'm pretty sure you're just gonna stay mad and keep attacking people anyway, so it it wasn't going to be much of an issue. 
Our capstone is the 16th level of Barbarian for one last ability score improvement. Capping off your dexterity modifier will make you harder to hit and better at hitting people with your ranged weapons. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you kick off the fight with big damage and keep it coming with extra attack plus eight damage to each attack and two d6 extra damage per round guaranteed from sneak attack to make sure that you're always carving through your foes you're also great at taking hits it's actually pretty good that your ac isn't higher since you can deal damage as you take it in finally you have a ton of skills and expertise to get things done even when you're not getting violent revenge for weaknesses barbarians are mad and i'm not talking about rage multi-ability dependence means your ac isn't as high as it could be i also pointed this out but investing in your constitution would make you bulkier especially since you probably want to use melee weapons while raging anyway finally you don't have any magical damage you'll probably get a magical weapon from your dm but if you don't getting through vibranium could prove difficult with anything other than returning damage that comes in thankfully you're tenacious enough to eventually work your way through push through carve through and conquer your ancestral homeland with the powers they've been hoarding for years just try not to get hit too much you're killmonger not die monger Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.